This is The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we head straight to our second conversation. Now we look at the People's Democratic Party dumping zoning and throwing ticket open. Ahead of its primaries, Nigeria's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, has decided to throw open its 2023 presidential ticket to all sections of the country. The party's national secretary discloses at the end of the People's Democratic National Executive Council meeting on Wednesday. The decision to throw open the ticket, he said, was in line with the recommendation made by the party zoning committee. We have Emeka Madunagu, a publisher of Metro's uh, newspaper in Lagos, joining us this morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning, my dears. All right. Um, let's share your thoughts on this. I mean, what do you make of a party who uh, has over time respected the principle of zoning? I mean, some people would say that they introduced the politics of zoning into the country. It has been their ideology over time. What, what do you make of it at a time where there's a clamor for power to shift to the southeast? Yeah, well, um, good morning once again. I think PDP is suffering from a, a lack of sense of history uh, because PDP was the party that um, ushered Nigeria into the First Republic at the, at the federal level. And um, I think they ought to have understood by now that all component parts of Nigeria must be fully represented in the, you know, at all levels of power. So for the PDP to betray the contest open is sort of uh, calling, for, um, calling for an outright defeat in the 2023 elections. Uh, why do I say so? Out of six zones in the country, four zones have actually tasted power. Under the PDP, between 1999 and uh, 2015, uh, it launched in with uh, from the Southwest for eight years. Atiku from the Northeast was the Vice President for eight years. Then in 2007, you had from the Northwest as the President. And then the Vice President was Good Luck John Milton from the South South. That was for two years, and the Yaradua passed on. Then the South South moved over to the presidency. And you know, the North West just rolled over to the vice presidency, and that lasted another four years. You know, so I mean, uh, um, that lasted another six years. I'm sorry. So until 2015, when Muhammad Wad came on board. So of, of the six zones, only the Southeast and the North Central have not tasted power under the PDP. And, and I think the PDP should be conscious of this fact, because if you now say, OK, you're throwing the, the contest open, what it means is that you are trying to not deepen the sense of injustice, which actually was one of the things that threw the PDP out of power in 2015. It got so drunk with power that it began to say, OK, it could stay, it could stay in power for 60 years. It began to use and dump. I mean, some chieftains of the PDP accused it of using and using people and dumping them. So there must be a sense of justice. There must be a sense of fairness. There must be a sense of belonging in any political party. Politics is a game of interest. It's about the interest of, the common, of, of all the members. And if there is a clamor within the party, even outside the party, that Power should shift to the southeast under the party. I mean, what is what is preventing the party from actually going that way? What is preventing the party from actually saying yes? This is what we want to do. You can see from the from the utterances and body language of, of the autumn, the committee headed by the Benin State Governor Samuel Otom, and you know you could see the slate of hand. They were not really sure of themselves. They didn't know how to present the uh, hidden agenda to the public. So when, when the story broke that they had uh, recommended that zoning should be jettisoned, they denied it. But what has happened today? The party leadership has said that it took the decision to jettison zoning based on the recommendation of the OTOM committee. And it's unfortunate, OTOM is from the, is from the North Central, uh, that you could head a committee of 37 members without bringing in a sense of history, sense of justice, a sense of fair play, into his recommendations, it's unfortunate. It's really, really unfortunate. And I think if the APC goes ahead to push a candidate from the South, 
and the PDP gives it to a candidate from the north, I, 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 I think the PDP is going to have a serious problem in the 2023 presidential The PDP knows all of this. If it is aware of all those um, internal, uh, you know, uh, calculations and uh, zones and uh, fairness and all, why would it just want to go ahead and just uh, uh, seemingly shoot itself in the leg, judging by the fact that, um, as it looks uh, right now, the APC is moving towards the south? You know, the PDP has not really um, recovered from um, it's near self-annihilation, self-immolation that happened after the 2015 election. I mean, a, a lot of his chieftains actually betrayed the party in the run-up to the 2015 elections. They dumped the party, and these are the same people now coming back to say they want to pick the party's presidential ticket. I mean, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. I mean, this is politics without principle. People like um, Saraki Tambowal, who dumped the party, and they are coming back and trying to make uh, strong claims. I mean, the party should actually look at, ask itself some, some very salient questions. Why, what, what do we exist for? Is this a political party of common interest? Or is this a cabal, a conclave, an enclave of just um, some people who, I mean, who, who, whom, I mean whose interests we are trying to protect? Atiku Abubaka who dumped the party to, along with um, others, is, I mean, is back, running for the, gunning for the, gunning for the ticket. Why? Why? He should give way for other people. He should give way for other people. He has run how many times? He should give way for other people. Let the contest be thrown open. I mean, Tambo, for instance, done the party, and is coming back. To do what? Uh, um, Saraki done the party, enjoyed himself, out of the party and then came back again now trying to there should be principle there should be fair play there are people who have remained consistent with the party for years and they have continued to keep the party running you know the pdp almost went into extinction you know after the 2015 election but somehow it came back it bounced back to power you know it bounced back to power, but it has not been able to really play the role of an opposition party so it's lost in the wilderness. It's not the ruling party. It's not the opposition. It's not the leader of the opposition, as it were. So now the PDP maybe imagines itself still being in control of the levers of power, being the ruling party. It still has hallucinating about that. Instead of thinking of what are the best strategies for us to get this power back? How do we go about this? How do we ensure inclusiveness? Okay, there is this myth that okay, if we take a Notana, well, we'll quickly, we'll easily get, uh, we'll easily pick votes. Atiku Abubakar said he has 11 million votes. Well, I wonder whether those votes are transferable from one election to the other. But you see, be that as it may, I think the party should be very careful about shooting itself in the foot because you can't use people and dump them. You can't. You can't just leave the door open and you say everybody should contest without taking into consideration certain historical facts concerning your party since 1999. The PDP should really, should really think again about that decision. It claims that it doesn't have time. That was what the Autumn Committee said, that there's no time to consider whether it should go for zoning or not. But that is not, but that's not correct. Because, I mean, if it had all the time in the world up to, up until now to take a decision. So how is this suddenly saying that um, that there is no time? INEC has also done some adjustments concerning the primaries. So the PDP should actually go back to the drawing board and ask yourself a question. You may they may say yes, oh that zoning is not this or that. Just like if I remember Jonathan at the time tried to deny Zoning tried to claim that, oh, there was nothing like zoning until he was shown where he signed a communique, you know, of the party, you know, where he was number 34. And he was shown that and said, well, you know, the one that signed this thing, that zoning, zoning should be considered. Now, the strange thing in the decision of the party's leadership is that it should work towards producing a consensus candidate. That means I can reasonably suspect that the, the, the party's leadership is working to an answer, is working towards a predetermined answer. I mean, maybe trying to gift the ticket to, you know, preferred candidates. 
but it should be careful that it doesn't head to an implosion because we have 18 political parties. Um, if you remove the PDP and the APC, there are still 16 political parties. And if any of its um, popular candidates should walk out of the party and go to another party, it's going to have a problem in the 2023 elections. Nigerians are desirous of a serious, fit, capable, and able president. That's what we want. We don't want people who are tired or who have been unable to put up a serious performance in office to come and waste our time again for another, for another eight years, the kind of experience we've had in the last seven years of purposeless leadership. We don't want that anymore. So okay, the PDP so should put this house in order. Yes. Let's look at the uh, permutations that you put out. You talked about the fact that if um, the PDP considers uh, leaving the, of course, they've considered leaving the ticket open, and it happens that a northern candidate emerges, then it might just be your favorite for, uh, you know, the APC paraventure they have the tilt towards uh, the southern path. Of course, you have Jonathan now in the race. But do you think that Nigerians actually care at this point in time where the presidency emerges from whether the south or the north? Or do you more concerned about who fixes yeah, the country? Yeah, Niger oh, okay. Are you done with your question? Yes, please. Yeah, Nigerians really care. You see, much as we want um, purposeful and capable leadership, we also are not closing our eyes or pretending to look away from historical antecedents. Um, we must also realize that the man on the street is politically aware. I mean, social media has actually breached the communication gap. So things happening around the world, around the country, actually are close to you, just, uh, you know, on your phone. So. And interestingly, in different languages. So the point is this. Nigerians want capable, uh, a capable, fit, and healthy president. Yes. But at the same time, there is no zone in the country that cannot produce a good leader. That is a fact. I must concede that. But if you're working towards a consensus candidate, then you must realize one thing, that it's not just about, oh, we want to win elections. You should be able to get candidates, you should be able to get a candidate, a presidential candidate, who's, I mean, whom you will campaign for vigorously, sell his program, sell his ideals, sell the programs of the party, sell the manifesto of the candidate, so that you can win power. It's about going out there to win. But if it's just for the purpose of winning, just, and then you say, okay, you give it to the North. I bet you a lot of people might leave the party. A lot of people might abandon the party and say, okay, fine. What, what, of what use has PDP really been to us anyway? I mean, you still see people defecting from the party, defecting from the party, accusing leaders of the party at different levels of injustice, accusing them of um, selective, uh, selective giving, giving prominence to their own, their, their, their cronies. So the PDP must wake up. You cannot wish away zoning in a nation of 200 million people with six geopolitical zones. You cannot wish it away. It has become a part of our history. We may say it doesn't matter, but I must tell you something: that these things breed, these things breed, these things breed anger. They breed animosity in people, and that's why you see some issues like separatist agitation in some parts of the country. That's why you see. You know, people jumping from one platform to the other. You know, different expressions of discontent with the way things are being done. So if the North has um, that mythical, you know, that mythical uh, voting strength, which some politicians have been pushing, fine, then deploy it in the favor of the South. It should be a conversation that, OK, please, we need to give it to the South, the Southeast. Let us now look at the look at the position, uh, look at the possibility that okay, the north push it to this. Let, let's support the south for six for eight years, and then another eight years to go to the north. You see, you dance for me, I dance for you. That's what makes you know. That's what balances human existence. But if we just tilt into one side, then 
You want to ask me what kind of political party that uh, that is? I'll tell you, it's not a political party that's serious about inclusiveness. It's not just about winning elections. It's also about inclusiveness. So if, like you said, uh, the different permutations in the different political parties, well, if the APC decides to give it to the North, PDB gives it to the North, what if a dark horse emerges from another party? What if people out of um, people just feel that, wait a minute, what is really going on? We're All talking right. of, we're asking for injustices, revealing injustices to be redressed, and people are still pushing this thing forward. All right, we don't care. Well, then they support the candidate from another party, that horse. All right, thank you, Emeka. Uh, yes. Thank you, Emeka Madunago. We are completely out of time for this particular discourse. We want to say a very big thank you, you know, to you this morning for all the thoughts that you have shared uh, with us today. Yes. Thank you very much. It is our pleasure. Well, that's the size of our conversation on The Breakfast this morning. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We return tomorrow. The time is 7 o'clock. But if you've missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to YouTube channel where Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Sibuku. Thanks for watching. And I'm Justin Akademi. Thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now. <laughs>